so the main focus of our paper was to design an Arabic OCR. Uh, I'll be presenting on behalf of my colleagues. Our goal today is to first introduce and uh, be aware of the problem of designing an Arabic OCR itself. Then we will begin outlining the uh, method that we have proposed, including the system structure, all the necessary pre-processing, and uh, all the other algorithms that we, uh, that we use today. And then uh, I will try to highlight the results, and uh, we will open. Uh, I'll be open for any questions afterwards. So the main difficulty that uh, people encounter when designing an OCR for Arabic uh, for Arabic ligature itself is that. Uh, Based on the nature of the Arabic script itself, there are several uh, overlapping characters. This means that it's very difficult sometimes to find the appropriate boundary between these characters. Uh, furthermore, the characters are usually connected, so that means that distinguishing the characters themselves can also be very difficult. And the character shape depends on its position uh, in a certain words. So as an example, this is uh, al Arabiya, And as you can see, the characters are very connected. Uh, as we'll see in further examples that the position of the characters themselves uh, depend, uh, their, their shape depends on their position. And uh, this will all be highlighted in the following uh, slides. The general system structure that we went with was uh, we made everything modular. So for example, the pre-processing module receives the word images and its goal is to finally emit, uh, it receives the scan text itself and then it emits the word images. The character segmentation module then receives these words and emits uh, a single character, uh, single character image. Uh, the character classifier then takes these character images, uh, it emits the predicted characters and finally the post-processing module collects these characters into the appropriate words for the final document output. Uh, the first part of the pre-processing, we performed uh, a Gaussian blur so this was done to first uh, smooth the, the letters themselves in case uh, pictures were pixelated. Uh, the second uh, step was to perform binary thresholding. So instead of dealing with grayscale images, it made it much simpler to deal with binarized images. Uh, <laughs> finally, if the images themselves were, uh, were skewed or rotated, we uh, performed document deskewing by first finding the minimum bounding rectangle and the center of the image. Then we obviously rotated around the center. And finally, uh, we performed line segmentation, word segmentation. The line segmentation was uh, performed by blurring the entire line. Uh, this meant that the first horizontal line of pixels without any black uh, pixels was the, the separation between these lines. Uh, this made it much easier. Uh, the, the blurring made it much easier because uh, a part of Arabic script is that there are dots above and below the words. So the blurring was necessary so that uh, the, the dots would mesh with the entire word without uh, creating unnecessary uh, separations between the lines. Uh, finally, we performed word segmentation. After isolating each line, we performed the word segmentation itself. Uh, so uh, each line was outputted as a single word. To do this, we applied thinning uh, to isolate the words from each other so that uh, we would be able to take each word on its own. And obviously we created a gap length filtration. So like a gap of uh, a couple of pixels, it was dependent on the text itself. Uh, now we move on to the uh, word level feature extraction. The first, the first feature that we wanted to isolate for each word was the baseline. So the, the official definition of a baseline is the horizontal line for each word with the greatest number of black pixels. Uh, the reason that we want to isolate the baseline is because it connects uh, all the characters in a, or most of the characters in an Arabic word and it performs a very uh, useful landmark uh, that we can use to extract other features for the word. So for example, uh, based on the previous word, this would be the baseline. The second feature that we wanted to isolate was the line of maximum transitions. So a uh, transition is basically any change in pixel value from black to white or white to black. Uh, and the line of maximum transitions is the row of pixels with the greatest number of these transitions. Uh, the reason that we want to isolate the LMT or the line of maximum transitions is because each intersection with the LMT uh, identifies a new character or part of the same character. So each, in, uh, so each character intersects the LMT at least once. Uh, this can be seen on the previous example. Again, this is the green line is the line of maximum transitions. And as you can see, each character intersects the LMT at least once, uh, except for the last character, the te, it intersects the LMT twice. Uh, finally, the last region uh, or the last feature that we want to extract is called the potential cut region. 
uh, the cut uh, is basically any imaginary line that separates the two characters. So a PCR or the potential, uh, potential cut region is an area where we think a cut may exist between two characters. Uh, to find the PCR, we traverse the line of maximum transitions, uh, the LMT, uh, from right to left. Uh, and whenever we find the black pixel followed by a white pixel, this is the start of a PCR. Uh, so as you can see here, we traversed the LMT from right to left, and each black pixel followed by white one was a start of the PCR. Uh, to find the end index of the PCR, we traverse again, and each white pixel followed by a black pixel is the end of a PCR. So based on the previous two examples, these would be our potential cut regions between the characters themselves. Okay, now that we've extracted the uh, features that we need to use, we can go on to begin the actual character segmentation. So our character segmentation algorithm is divided into two parts, the excessive cut creation and the improved cut filtration itself. Uh, the goal of the excessive cut creation is to find as many correct cuts as possible. So here we don't really concern ourselves with whether we've found the, opt like the, the correct number. Our goal is just to not to miss any of the, uh, of any of the correct cuts, uh, even if this means creating excessive cuts, uh, which, uh, which will eventually be dealt with with the ICF or the improved cut filtration. Uh, so the first part of the ECC is called the baseline cuts. This deals with most of the cases of uh, finding the correct cuts. It basically just inspects each column of pixels in a PCR. And whenever there is a column of pixels where the only black pixels are those of the baseline, it, uh, it, it, it places a cut there and then it moves on to the next PCR. Uh, so as we will see here, for example, if these were the PCRs that we defined in the previous couple of slides, uh, we just have to iterate over each uh, column in each PCR. And whenever we find a column of uh, entirely white pixels above or below the baseline, like the only black pixels are the baseline itself, we place a cut there and then we move on to the next PCR. So based on this example, these would be the cuts. And at first glance, it appears that uh, this, this algorithm worked perfectly, like it segmented all the characters correctly. However, uh, an, interesting uh, an interesting thing happens when we change the font. So this is the same word, but with a different font. Again, we find the baseline and the PCRs. However, when we try to make the cuts, we find that there is one cut that's missing. This is the one in the middle right here. And the reason that it's missing is because, again, as we said, the characters can overlap sometimes. So the PCR had pixels entirely below the baseline in the entire PCR. So there, there was never any chance for the baseline cuts to make a, to, to find the, the, the required cut. So this is where the second algorithm called separation cuts uh, comes in. So since baseline cuts fails to separate uh, whenever there are uh, pixels below the baseline, separation cuts tries to test whether the start and end pixels of a PCR are connected and it places a cut whenever they are connected. So to find the start pixels of a PCR, so if this were our PCR, we find the PC, uh, like the start index and the end indexes uh, intersection with the LMT. So these are two uh, pixels. Like this is the start pixel and this is the end pixel, the intersection. And since there is no connected path of black pixels, it just places a cut in the PCR. Uh, okay, so the previous example, uh, the previous couple of algorithms do find uh, all the required cuts. However, uh, it creates excessive cuts. So the goal of the ICF is to filter these excessive cuts. Uh, so in order to understand, we must first like define uh, the potential character. A potential character is any region that exists between two cuts. That's our goal, to, to find if each potential character is an independent character, or if it is part of a character that has been falsely cut or falsely segmented. Now, there are actually three cases, uh, three general cases that generate excessive cuts. The first one is called the scene and sheen case. So given this word, uh, if we just find the baseline and the line of max transitions, we go on to find the PCRs. You'll find that there are two PCRs uh, created because the scene letter intersected the LMT th uh, three times. So there will be two excessive PCRs. And this means that there will be two excessive cuts. Again, as you'll see uh, in this example, the scene came at the end of the letter, at the end of the word, so its shape is quite different. We again isolate the baseline and the LMT and the cuts, there are two excessive cuts in the scene character. Uh, the basic algorithm is to just identify uh, what qualifies as the stroke of the scene or sheen and what qualifies as the bowl. So in the previous example, the last part of the letter would be a bowl. The last part of the scene would be a bowl. 
And whenever the algorithm detects three successive scene strokes or two scene strokes followed by a poll, it just removes the, the two cuts. So in this example, we just uh, isolate the three strokes, then it would remove these cuts. And in this example, it would also do the same. That's the first case. The second case is called the solid belt case. Again, we find the baseline line of max transitions. And when we cut, we find that the solid is split into two. Uh, again, the solid shape is different based on its position. It's uh, when it comes at the end of the character, it has also a similar bowl to the scene. So this case was also handl handled similarly. We find the stroke of the solid or dot. We find the bowl of the solid or dot. And we also find the hole. Uh, so in this example, the solid is either split into a hole and stroke or a hole and bowl. And uh, we remove the cuts whenever the algorithm detects either of these cases. Uh, the final case is called the beta, the, and fa case. We didn't uh, include all of the examples because it's basically the same for all of them. Just find the baseline and the line of maximum transitions. Uh, again, you'll find that the beta is split into two characters. Uh, so we just identify all parts of the stroke of the beta or fa, and we remove these cuts uh, accordingly. Uh, so in this case, we'd also remove the bat case. We'd also remove the cut created by the bat. Uh, the, the improvements that we've made over the previous work. Uh, first of all, that there's uh, the algorithm works without any dependence on linguistic or statistical patterns. What we mean by this is that certain algorithms wouldn't work if uh, there were a combination of characters that follow each other. For example, if the Saldor Dodd uh, had uh, a scene or scene after it, the algorithms wouldn't really work. However, our algorithm is independent of, uh, of any linguistic patterns. The, the second advantage is that the ECC algorithms uh, use less false cuts. We do this by not creating a cut whenever, there's, uh, there, whenever there are any black pixels above or below the baseline. Uh, this greatly reduces the amount of work that the ICF uh, algorithm has to do. Uh, other algorithms did filter this, but they added the extra load onto the ICF. So this in, uh, increased the processing time uh, significantly. Furthermore, we deal with the scene and scene at the end of the word. Other algorithms neglected this case completely, which caused several false segmentations. Uh, furthermore, we created a, a more accurate definition of the bowl. So this means that words that were similar in shape to the scene at the end of the word, like the noon or lem, were not falsely uh, merged with the previous character because a false definition of the bowl or an inaccurate definition would falsely merge certain characters that had certain topographical features similar to the scene uh, with, with the preceding character. And finally, we have just a general handling of the beta, fa, and fa case, which led to much better results and much better segmentation accuracy. Now, <clears throat> after extracting every uh, character individually, the, what's usually done now is the feature extraction. However, our system aims to be as fast as possible with like doing uh, the least amount of errors. In order to achieve the maximum speed possible, we decided to not do any handcrafted features or apply any filters to each character, but rather feeding the entire uh, image of the character to the network. So for example, uh, a character such as the scene would look like this after all the segmentation, and then we'd flatten it instead of a 2D array to a single dimensional array. So as you can see, this section would be flattened into this. And as you can see, every, uh, the, black, the black sections represent the density of black in each row. So this one is a single, 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 and then it gets thicker as we go down, so just, just as the scene shows. Now, uh, the images are 24 by 24, which means the uh, flattening them would give us a 576 pixel array. Of course, that would be massive for the network. So we decided to do a PCA and reduce the dimensionality. And uh, plotting the, the cumulative explained variance against the number of components shows that the variance or most of the data that we really need is represented by only the two, 200 components of the PCA. So that allows us to not use the last, uh, the remaining 300 while maintaining over 99% of the variance and the data in the, 200, in the first 200 components. The uh, model we decided to use was a simple neural network. Since the uh, image is a very simple binary image that is perfectly segmented and uh, not, not many complex features uh, or shapes about it, a, a simple uh, the neural network was sufficient with 200 layers input, the components, then 150, 70, and finally a final layer of 29, uh, 29 nodes where each node represents the likelihood of the image being said character, representing the 29 characters in the Arabic language. 
uh, we trained our uh, network using 1.2 million examples. That is over 300,000 words in order to account for the different shapes, different sizes, different fonts, and take into consideration as many factors as possible. And we trained it for 80 epochs with 8,192 batch sizes. We also added 10% dropout after every layer in order to ensure there is no overfitting of characters. We want it to be as generalized as possible. Now for the results. Our data set composed mainly of uh, Alwatan corpus, which is an open data set with huge amounts of vocabulary, different sizes, different fonts, different styles, and everything the model could actually encounter in real life. And we also added the APTI data set, which is the standardized benchmark for testing Arabic OCRs. Now, the fonts. As you can see, the shape of uh, the letter, depending on the font, can vary from something as slight as the curvature in shape, such as the first letter or the second letter. Only the curvature uh, is changed. And it can go as far as the entire letter being changed, such as the lem elif here, lem elif here. It's it looks completely different. A lot of subtle differences and a lot of huge differences, but we had to take into consideration every single uh, difference in the fonts. <clears throat> so uh, our first metric for uh, our accuracy was the word segmentation uh, results, which basically means how many correct words we actually segmented. As you can see, the, uh, in comparison of uh, Al Qarush et al, which is a, a paper that was uh, published in a journal only a year ago, that had this, the current, the, the past state of the art results, it shows uh, an, the highest achieved accuracy of 96.26%, whereas ours achieves on the same font, 97.4, but an overall high of 99%. Not only that, but we also use a, a, a significantly larger amount of test cases, which is 100,000, as opposed to their 13,000, which shows ours is more robust and also more accurate. Same thing with the character segmentation. We decided to see how many characters we actually segmented. And our method shows a 98.23% correct segmentation, which is higher than any of the previous works. But not only that, but also our font set is much larger, which is which was what was Parush et al used, which is font set A, plus all the other fonts that are that contain uh, no luggage that we could find easily in the data set. As for the overall system accuracy, our, our proposed method shows a 97.94% accuracy in the overall system of classification and, and a remarkable 139 seconds in the runtime, which is also lower than any other. System. So not only a system is our system accurate, it's also incredibly lightweight and incredibly fast. <clears throat> As for the future work relevant to this project, we aim to integrate it in uh, larger scale projects where uh, results uh, that are time dependent uh, are important. For example, uh, like a live uh, image, to sp uh, image to speech system where, where, where we need instant translation of the images. Our system due to its lightweight nature would be incredibly uh, useful. We also aim to enrich it with m as many more fonts as we can find that, that don't include ligatures. And also uh, improving our Pre-processing uh, would uh, greatly improve our results, but however, we aim to keep it as lightweight as possible. We all we need to are as fast and as efficient. Restem not only does it beat any any other segmentation-based algorithm. Not only does it beat other segmentation-based algorithms in terms of accuracy, it also shows unmatched speed to all of the previous work. It is a lightweight, lightning-fast system with remarkable accuracy, and we are open for any questions. Thank you. <laughs>